cash. If you if you're like I'm going to take a loan on all my Bitcoin, you're screwed. You're pretty much going to get liquidated. So that's why I don't recommend people use this stuff either because it's really stressful. That is stressful. Like, I hadn't thought about having to come back and top it off with something that you maybe don't own or have to buy. With yeah, you, you may have, have to buy Bitcoin, you know, with with the loan money or something like that. Yeah, <laughs> and then you're, and then you're kind of screwed. Oh yeah, yeah. The problem where I'm at for me with crypto is like I have enough where it's like sort of interesting for me to sit on, but it's not enough for me. Like I wouldn't bother getting a fifty five thousand dollar loan when I can just like get a check from an advertiser next week that's like that amount and then put it in my right. bank account. But that's probably healthy because if you need loans against your crypto, you either got a ton of crypto because you were in early like you or you own entirely too much cryptocurrency. Yeah. Well, the good thing about it, though, and this is I don't think I said this yet, but the good thing about these these loans, these uh, crypto backed loans is like for me, let's say I I did. I recently just bought a house. In Nova Scotia. Congrats. I saw, is that the one you sent me the video? That dope house on the water? No, I wanted that one. That was just too much money. Okay. So it was $105,000, this house. That's a very reasonable price for a house. Does it have a roof? Yeah, right? I know. But it's Nova Scotia. It's, it's in a small village in Nova Scotia. So real estate prices are pretty low for, you know, if we looked at uh, similar on the water houses here in Ontario, this house would be a million dollars easy. It's a small house, but still the waterfront, you know, the size of the house, the bedrooms, whatever. So we go back and forth from Cape Breton and visit and my family's from there. So I'm like, I'm going to be a landowner in the village that I grew up in, you know, going to my grandmother's house every summer. So we bought this place. Now, for me, it would make sense for me to take some of my Bitcoin and collateralize it and get a loan for the $100,000 rather than going to the bank. Because I don't pay capital gains taxes on that loan because I'm just borrowing money. So it makes sense if I don't have any money, right? It would make sense for me to get a loan on my Bitcoin because I still think Bitcoin is going to a million. I don't want to give up the gains, but I want to enjoy this house. So if I take a loan on the Bitcoin, then I'm not paying capital gains early because it's not a realized profit. It's a loan. So you're still using, you're, you're still anchored to the potential upside of Bitcoin. So that's the one thing that makes it tempting for me to want to do for like this purpose where this is a house, I want to enjoy it. I don't want to pay cap gains taxes by selling Bitcoin and buying the house. So I will maybe take a loan and like 2x collateralize it. You know, that's the idea for, it's for people that have like, it's for miners and for people that had some crypto early or even maybe some high net worth people, guy like Ray Dalio that, had, or uh, who was it? The uh, Paul Tudor Jones eventually like put 1% of his assets in Bitcoin, you know, like people like that, that, that believe it's going to go way up in the future. So they want to keep exposed to the price appreciation. So yeah, it's, there's an interesting use case for it for sure. But for the average person, I don't think it makes any sense. Just, just hold your Bitcoin. Yeah, I, I guess looking at it, it'd be like, sure, would be nice to have $55,000 sitting around or whatever I can get a you know, loan value for, but then paying interest on it doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Right. You got to really be long Bitcoin and you really got to believe it's going to go up at least 2x over the next couple of years because you're paying 12% or so a year interest yeah. on it. So it does, it does not make a lot of sense unless you're like a super bullish on Bitcoin. Don't want to pay the capital gains taxes until it's much higher. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, we've been going for quite a while here. I got, I got to be conscious of your time here, Jordan. I think we we're only supposed to do an hour. Yeah, no, this is fun. I liked it, and and hopefully your listeners found some value in it. It wasn't just us rambling because there's definitely a lot to talk about. I thought this was interesting. I'm kind of coming at this from a more layman perspective or lay perspective, and I'm like, you know, the, there's a lot we're still hearing about, and it is funny to see, or I don't know, if funny is quite the right word, that this scams and the little like hey, we'll do this and give you that. Like the tricky sleight of hand is like starting to make a comeback for a lot of this, a lot of this crypto stuff right now. Yeah, you're like the perfect representation of a smart person that's influential that, that came into crypto because you saw the prices were going up and people were recommending it to you, right? Yeah, I mean, I had listeners donate Bitcoin to me in like 2011 or whenever it was, and I kept it. So my first Bitcoin... Oh, I didn't know that. That's cool. Oh, yeah. My first Bitcoin was like in a wallet that I'd basically printed off some some kind of address or something and kept it like in my wallet for a while. 
Um, and then say paper wallet, yeah, paper wallet. I think I saved the text file. Cause I was like, it's a Bitcoin. It's, it was worth like 30 bucks or 25 <laughs> yeah, bucks yeah. or something like that, you know, at the time. Cause it was probably Bitcoin was under a hundred bucks or was at a hundred bucks or something like that. So I was just like, I'll just hold on to it. It's like a cool thing to have. It's fun that a couple of listeners have donated the 0.3 Bitcoin in total, you know, and now I kept it and now I'm like, Oh, thanks for the, I don't know, $3,000 guys or whatever this <laughs> is nice worth. tip. So then I already sort of had an idea and I, I never bought more, which is dumb because I looked at it and I thought this is really cool, but I didn't understand it. Like most people, I didn't understand it. And then a lot of my friends got into Ethereum early, bought a bunch of it, kept every time we'd hang out and go to sushi, they couldn't stop looking at their phone because every time we'd, we'd order another roll and they'd be up $5,000. You know what I mean? <laughs> and then they'd go, hey, you want to get dessert? And I'd go, Sure. What are you thinking? Oh, let's go to this ice cream place. They check their phone at the ice cream place and they'd have earned $10,000 since we started dinner. You know what I mean? Or more. It was crazy. Yeah. Um, and so I finally got into it late enough. You know, the other thing, and this is a story for another day, was I was in, in probably 2014. I was sitting next to a friend, someone you know, and she told me to invest in Ethereum because her son invented it. And I said... <laughs> Yeah, right. Okay. Your kid invented crypto, uh, cryptocurrency. I've never heard of this uh, Ethereum business. You're, you know, it's good that your mom thinks it's cool though. And it turned out to be, <laughs> you know, freaking Ethereum. She's like, you should buy some. It's 48 cents or something, you know, whatever it was I'm like, mm, whatever lady. Whoops. Yeah. Well, that was the same thing with me. I had the chance to invest in that one. And like I said, the part of me is the capitalist brain, right? Where I'm like, people are going to be doing this. It's probably going to go up. I'm going to buy some because I'll just sell it and get more Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. Right. That's my mentality. It's just another way to mine Bitcoins. You can run the computer hardware uh, or you can earn it somehow or get your listeners to tip you or you can invest in these, you know, things that these kids are building and Dogecoin and Ethereum and all that stuff. So many crazy stories. Like right now there's this link coin where the have you heard about no. that one? Mm -mm. It's like it's like this coin that 4chan has been championing all year. I and wouldn't trust that. <laughs> well, it it went up like 70x in the last couple of months and now there's a bunch of millionaires from 4chan oh that ma they they made like a million dollars millions of dollars off of pumping this link coin. So I, I mean it doesn't and the thing doesn't need to have great fundamentals in a in a crazy market where the Fed is printing money and people are getting free checks and the consensus is that numbers are going to go up. It's one of those rising tide lifts all boats scenarios. And unfortunately it seems like it's starting to happen again and people are going to get sucked into a lot of things that are, that yeah. are uh, the difference is <laughs> it's not memes. all boats. It's the boats that come in last that get screwed, but the boats that were there early, the rising tide lifts. Yeah. That's the thing you got to remember. Right. Yeah. Well, thank you, man. This has been fun. And I know we, we barely scratched the surface. We didn't even talk about being an FBI informant or freaking or wiretapping know, or anything. Man. Can do that I next wanted time. To, we we got to have to do another yeah. one because I wanted to get to your North Korea stories, oh, yeah. too. You, you inter introduced Dennis, uh, interview Dennis Rodman. That was a cool episode. Yeah, we'll do and, it another uh, time your, for your, sure. your history as like a lawyer and, and a Wall Street guy. So we'll definitely do part two with Jordan sometime soon. Slow down. Slow down. To slow down every once in a while sometimes To see how the world goes round You need to slow down every once in a while